Mycoplasma pneumoniae is a small bacteria that causes a juicy type of atypical lung infection. It mostly affects children and young adults, causing BBL clinical manifestations, which is a reminder that this juicy disease is associated with brain, blood, and lung sequelae. The term atypical pneumonia is used inconsistently worldwide, but in general, it refers to infections that don't usually result in localized low bar consolidation or respond well to penicillins, often because these pathogens lack a cell wall. Now, when we think about its pathogenesis and microbiology, it's clear why mycoplasma is classified as an atypical bacteria. It's extremely small, lacks a cell wall, and likes to stay moist and cool. It's spread by droplets, and when they're inhaled, mycoplasma travels down into your lungs and attaches to the ciliated respiratory epithelial cells. This attachment process is facilitated by a P1 adhesion protein. Following attachment, it then produces toxins that cause injury to the host tissue. Some of the pathogenic features of M. pneumoniae infection are believed to be immune-mediated. The incubation period is about two to four weeks, which means the time course of infection in a population can be quite protracted. This is one reason why outbreaks occur in institutional settings like schools. The clinical features of mycoplasma can be classified with our BBL acronym. However, it's important to note that up to half of infections are asymptomatic. Let's start with its lung manifestations. And I remember mycoplasma can cause your ass to go up and down. This tells me it can trigger an exacerbation of asthma, presenting with a wheezy, obstructive picture on clinical examination. It can cause features of an upper respiratory tract infection, like sore throat, rhinorrhea, coryza, and ear pain. Now, mycoplasma can also affect your lungs deep down, manifesting in the form of pneumonia. To expand on this, the illness onset is gradual and may be heralded by headache, malaise, and a low-grade fever. The pneumonia is often patchy and non-lobar in distribution. Although it's often described as causing mild symptoms, in my own clinical experience, I have seen young, otherwise healthy patients require prolonged ICU admissions as well. In terms of non-respiratory diseases, it can also cause blood and brain issues. Hemolysis is the most common extrapulmonary sequelae, accompanying an incredible 60% of infections, although this is typically mild or even subclinical. This is an immune-mediated process. Mycoplasma induces an alteration in the antigens on red blood cells, leading to the development of IgM autoantibodies. The subsequent hemolysis is also termed cold agglutinin disease. Neurological manifestations are rarer and usually come in the form of encephalitis. However, a wide spectrum of neurologic disease can arise, including meningitis and Guillain-Barre syndrome. When investigating mycoplasma, you should rely on a combination of both PCR testing and serological testing to achieve the most accurate and prompt diagnosis. PCR allows for rapid, specific diagnosis earlier in the course of clinical illness, while serological tests for IgM and IgG antibodies to M. pneumoniae can help you ascertain if a patient has had recent exposure. The management of microbiologically confirmed mycoplasma mostly revolves around antibiotics. First-line options include macrolides like azithromycin or tetracyclines like doxycycline. Now, azithromycin is usually preferred in most countries. This is due to its prolonged half-life, which is about 72 hours, side effect profile, and efficacy. The typical course is 500 milligrams orally for three days. Doxycycline might be preferred in regions with high levels of macrolide resistance, like in China and Japan, although it has arguably worse side effects. 
This is typically dosed at 100 milligrams BD for five days. In general, your threshold to extend the treatment course should be low due to the organism's ability to cause persistent infection and prolonged shedding. Aside from antibiotics, other interventions like steroids may be indicated. Although not routinely recommended, corticosteroids in macrolide refractory disease has shown to significantly reduce hospital days and duration of fever. Let's summarize with our juicy mnemonics. To classify the clinical features of mycoplasma, remember BBL. Lung manifestations can result in ass up and down features, asthma exacerbations plus upper and lower respiratory tract infections. Finally, the management of this bootylicious disease is azithromycin on steroids. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.